Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is the second Sunday of Easter. It is April 16th, year of our Lord, 2023. I do pray this finds you well. This is the end of the octave of Easter, so the eight days. And we hear that in the text. This this morning's gospel reading is always the same for the the, the second Sunday after Easter. And it's Jesus' first appearance on, on Easter Sunday the Easter Sunday amongst the disciples, and then the subsequent one eight days later, so the following Sunday, which is significant with Thomas. Remember, Thomas wasn't there at the first time uh, The first time Jesus appeared. And you know how that goes, that uh, Thomas says, unless I you know, see him and put my hands in his wounds and see the wounds, I, I won't believe. And he does have, and the next Sunday, that miraculous encounter with the risen Lord, which is amazing, and we, we, we learn that the Lord indeed is raised from the dead. He's not an apparition. He has flesh and blood. Thomas gets to touch him. And then that wonderful word of comfort to all of us who live so far away in time and distance from when those events occurred in the history of the world. Jesus tells Thomas, you know, you, you, you're, you, you saw and you believe. Yeah, blessed are those who, who have not seen and still believe. And then John goes right to say, you know, these words are written. It's through the word which I'm going to share with you in a short while, that, that uh, we learn who we are in relationship to God. We learn of the Christ, God's love for us manifest in Christ our Lord. So yes, the end of that full octave of Easter. Uh, it's a, it was a wonderful week. The weather was great. Uh, it changed, of course, today, last night. Uh, it's nasty out there today. Hey, um, it's April, though, so anything that happens isn't going to stick around. And by God's grace, when that front came through, we didn't have really nasty weather like we did you know easter or the holy week uh and again i remind you share the word too if you know somebody that's complaining about the uh and we do unfortunately get a number of calls about somebody who was hit by uh it was confirmed that that whole area of rock island was hit by a tornado and we have a lot of and there are massive trees that are down and it's going to take some time to get cleaned up and it's that's not just a manual cemetery that's many of the big cemeteries of course the bigger cemeteries have deeper pockets, and there's only so many people around to cut trees down, do things like that. So also, um, uh, we need the youth at church. We talk to them or anybody else wants to do to pick up sticks. We have, to, we have to start mowing soon, and we need to go pick up sticks at the church property uh, at church, uh, that the nice 13 acres that we have. So uh, um, if you're so inclined, I think we can pile them out by the road. We'll hear from the property somebody what they want us to do with them. I think the city will still pick them up uh, for the next couple of weeks. Uh, a lot of that, those branches are down. There's no if you want to, going to be starting mowing soon in the next week or two. Probably many of you, if you have a lawn, you, you mowed in the, in the, in the uh, last week. Remember, on Tuesday morning, our Hebrews Bible study continues. We just got started with that last week. We're, we're in what's called the prolegomena stuff. And I'll mention this again tomorrow night. Uh, you know, what we know about who wrote it. The circumstances, what it is, the linguistic style, um, uh, what the ancient church said about it, which is always fascinating. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll begin a, a pretty deep analysis of the text. Uh, we're going to spend some time Tuesday morning talking about, again, what some of the ancients said about that. We read from Origin last week, but also uh, uh, how, how it came about. You know, we, we get a glimpse, particularly around Hebrews, about how things became to be included in the New Testament canon. Uh, and it's important for us to know that. So that's Tuesday morning at 9.30, the Intergenerational Bible Study, which will be ending at the end of May, the late one. That's when we go, we're going through the confessions. And that one's online only. You can have to, you have to just, you can just tune into that. Uh, the, the early one, the 9.31, is in person or online. Either one is fine. So, okay. Party 9.03. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. This evening, I am going to sing the psalm appointed from the daily lectionary for this day, the 91st psalm. It is an uninscribed psalm, so we don't know who wrote it. There's no circumstances about uh, when it might have been written. Uh, if there was a, spe a specific occasion, some of the psalms have that. So it's uh, an anonymous psalm, a beautiful psalm, and I will sing that. So I'm going to turn to the hymnal to do that because that's marked for me to do that. 
Again, this is the 91st Psalm. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the Father and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And that is the 91st, the 91st Psalm, an uninscribed Psalm, meaning, again, we don't know the author, and we don't know the occasion. So it's a, it's a, it is a beautiful Psalm of comfort, and it is, you might recognize it, it is one that Satan actually quotes during the temptation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, our Lord answers him with the word of God. You know, Satan likes to quote the word of God. And remember, Christ has defeated Satan. Don't you think you have to fight Satan? Just run to Christ. Run to Christ. He might harass you at times. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I can tell when I'm being harassed. Uh, uh, you know, I, anyway, I won't bore you with that. But, uh, you know, these entities are real. Uh, and they hate us uh, as Christians, and they want nothing more than you to turn your back on Christ. So Satan will quote scripture, he'll quote it out of context, he'll misquote it, he'll misapply it, and unless you really know your stuff, you know, uh, uh, you know, he'll, he'll get it all twisted up in your mind. Remember, that's his trick, did God really say? You know, that, that goes right back to the beginning. So you know, keep reading the Word of God and just run to Jesus, have questions, ask me, um, uh, you know, what, do, what does this mean? Stuff like that. And if you're being harassed, you know, ask me. Uh, there's things we can do, uh, you know, the church things, you know, things that are uh, that pastors do in those situations. So this wonderful psalm of comfort. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, who will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. You know, we're always in his shadow. And this is all because of Christ our Lord. You know, uh, and I, there, as you're reading this psalm or singing this psalm, you hear, you know, Christ. Uh, we hear about God hiding us, this wonderful image that comes up in many psalms, that God takes us under his wings, you know, like a, uh, a hen mother 
or mighty eagle. Both those images are used. And, and, and Jesus will say, you know, how I long, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I long to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks, you know, under her wings, that, that being covered, you know, by God and being, you know, protected, being held in close to him. And that happens, of course, through the life of the church. We're drawn into Christ. We are, we're constantly being nourished by the word, by the blessed sacrament, of course, being pointed to how we've become a disciple uh, and the promises that God has made to us. And we're, we're re redirected to these kind of words all the time in these, in these dark and latter days, this comforting word. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, uh, from the deadly pestilence. We know, you know, by virtue of our baptism into Christ and to his death and resurrection that and what is death to us? It, it won't hold us. You know, the, the thing that motivates us so much to do crazy things and make really bad decisions, you're know, running out of time, blah, 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 uh, you know, life is short, you know, et cetera. Yeah, true. No, but you are a child of eternal life. And you know that the life that awaits you, it, you know, is glorious. And we can't even begin to describe it in this life. You know, that's how fallen we are. Just God, you know, this is where we go back to his word. He says, just trust me, it's going to be wonderful. And it will be. You know, it absolutely will be. Um, so he will cover you with his pinions, and under the wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. This morning, for the, first, the, the second Sunday of Easter, we also read First Peter, uh, the very first chapter, verses 3 through 9. We read that a lot at funerals. It's magnificent. And we hear over and over what God is doing, that he caused you to be born again. That's a quote. You know, he, he, you know, he caused you to be saved. He caused you to be born again. You know, that, that's wonderful because you don't have to sit and think, did I do it right? Uh, yeah, you know, you're baptized, you did it right because you know, he did it. He did it. You know, um, uh, and then we heard how he is keeping and guarding your salvation, even though, you know, we have to suffer now. You know, and our, and our, 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 our faith is often tested in this lifetime by the things that we do and, and the, you know, the things that happen around us. And yet, God tells us, I'm guarding you, I'm keeping you, I am holding you, you know, and, and, and the promises that comes right from the, the word of the mouth of Christ himself, nothing will snatch you out of my hand, you know. Um, so, you know, he, his faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Buckler was uh, the, the shield that you wear on your forearm, you know, so you got you know, that shield and that buckler is a, often spoken of together as one unit. Um you will not fear. Remember, Jesus says that over and over again. Stop being afraid. I've got this. Stop being afraid. I've got your forgiveness. I've got your death taken care of. You know, you are now completely and totally forgiven, perfectly holy through the blood of Jesus Christ and an heir to everlasting life, an heir to the kingdom of heaven through Jesus Christ. Um, it's marvelous. You know, do not fear. Stop being afraid. Pestilence that stalks in the darkness. Don't worry about it. You know, the destruction that wastes the new day, don't worry about it. In this dark and latter days, there's a lot to be worried about. And I mentioned in the sermon this morning, I, I get scared. I get scared not for myself, you know. Um, you know I, I look at, I mentioned in the sermon, I look at the faces of the little ones, and it, I'm worried about the future of them in, in the regard of what they may have to go through. But God promises to be with them. God promises just like he is with us. And God, you know, promises that the gates of hell will not prevent, prevail against his church. And, you know, our prayer for all of us is that we remain steadfast. That we remain steadfast. Um, I mean, we've had it comfortable. We have a difficult time remaining steadfast. Maybe that's the problem. Uh, I don't know. So we hear, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but this pestilence will not come near you. We'll see death all around us. You know, we'll wade through it. Uh, it will not come near you, O baptized child of God, baptized in Christ's most holy name. Be, why? Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. That's our life in Christ. Of the Most High, who is my refuge? No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. And then here's where, where Satan begins to quote. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On your hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus says, you know, you, we, we, we don't test God. But that's a promise that we have in Christ. We don't, we don't test him. Whenever our death comes, it comes. Uh, long life, short life, when it comes, it comes. However, you know, um, he, we are guarded. You know, he will, uh, no matter what we see, you know, we are children of life. No plague will come near that tent of Jesus Christ that we are in, in our life in the church. Um, 
When he calls to me, I will answer him. Remember, that's how the church service begins. I do not like it. You're here, you're gonna, you're gonna hear the speech again. You hear, you know, probably once a quarter. I just have to keep reminding people about this. We don't go into church and make our beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ooh, yuck. You know, it's an invocation. And here's the promises that are linked to that. Invocation means it's the Latin, you know, invoke means to call. It means we call upon God and his promises to be there. I don't walk my, my, my trusty pooches, 85 pounds of love is sitting over there. Um, he's on the couch, he's allowed to lie, is the, is the crummy basement couch. Um, and he knows it and he's up on it. And if I call him, he'll come. You know, well, he's an old lazy dog, so maybe he won't come, but he'll look, he'll acknowledge me, he'll look at me. And if I do give the right command, he will come. But I call, and the expectation is that he is there. I don't come in and say, I make my beginning in the name of Buddy. You know, he doesn't even flinch when I do that. But if I call him, he'll come. You know, we don't walk in and say, I make my beginning in the name of, of you know, you walk in a room, you're looking for somebody. I don't make my name, beginning in the name of Jerry. You just call upon them, and the hope is that they're there, and they'll answer. And God's promise is, when you call, I will answer. So that's why we just simply invoke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we're calling upon him. And his promise is right there. When he calls to me, I will answer him. And there's always that interesting in the in, in the Psalms, in the New Testament, the Old Testament, the Old Testament as well. The nation of Israel, which is God's people, reduced it down to one. It starts with the one with with, with uh, Jacob, who God changes the name to Israel, but then Christ becomes that one. But you hear it. Um, you 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 hear it even in the, in the Psalms, like we're hearing now. All of God's people reduced down into one. Of course, that's Christ. So in the one Christ, the only one, in our Savior, through the blood of our Savior, we become the children of God. So if it's true for him, it's true for us. Because we are we we are brought into Christ through the gifts of the church, starting with your baptism. Yeah, there I am talking about it again. But it's that important. It really is that important. Um, when he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. And we know because of Christ. Remember, Christ is the one who says, you're going to pray this way. We get to... We get to say our Father, as we'll say in just a minute. We get to call upon God, the Almighty God, the everlasting God, the creator of everything, the one that holds up the universe by his word of power, and it's a big universe. The one who, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, the Almighty God, how can we, how can we even begin to think about him? And he says, Jesus says, oh, by the way, you get to call him Father. I'm going to bring you in. You know, we, again, we, this all happens through Jesus Christ. going to bring you into his presence, and you get to call on him as a dear child, quoting Luther there. As a dear child approaches their dear father. When he calls to me, I will answer him. And remember, often we don't even know what to pray. We don't know how to pray. Um, that's Romans chapter 8, where you know, Paul writes, you know, oh gosh, you know, how do we even know how to pray? But God knows how to pray. And remember, that's where that promise is. As we don't know how to pray and can't make sense of what's going on around us, and who prays for suffering, but that might actually be the will of God. I mean, who prays for tragedies to happen, but God, you know, uh, because of his good and gracious will, will use those things or allow them to happen so his will is done. And, 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 and the comfort is, no matter what, God's good and gracious will is being done. These things work for good. Not necessarily your personal good and comfort, but for good. And ultimately, that good is also your good because that means you know, you're saved, you're, you're part of all this. Uh, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And how Romans chapter 8 ends, same, same thought. You know, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Not, not even death. Not even death. Um, um, okay. I could talk a lot about that wonderful psalm. Let's now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, having received the great gift of the resurrected Jesus Christ, the one who has ascended and is now at your right hand, uh, having received him in word and sacrament this day, may we be filled with joy as we go about our various vocations throughout the coming week. And may our lives bear fruit uh, uh, that has been nourished by these blessed gifts. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who are traveling, uh, bless their steps, uh, uh, guide them to their destination and into their homes. We ask, uh, ask you, we ask you to be with those who are crying out to you for healing and for those who death draws near. We ask you to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ, Myron, Dennis, Dave, Don, Ardo, and Kloss, my brother in office, Dale, dear friends of our congregation, Jason, Marlis, Liberty, Dave, Bert, Joe, Phil, Heather, Anita, D, Katie, Dylan, Jeff, Josiah, John, Jason, Bob, Christy, Camden, Jim, Brad, Ashley, Tom, Scott, Paul, Eric, Clint, Amy, Beth, Deb, Steve, Don, George, Ronnie, and all who cry out to you. Heavenly Father, place your hand upon them, keeping them ever mindful that you indeed um, have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, that he has shattered open uh, the chains of death and now holds that last captivity that we face. He holds it captive. Heavenly Father, bless us always with this good news, and as we face the frailty of our fallen flesh, grant us your peace. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Between your hands, I commend myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And tonight I'm going to sing uh, a hymn that's not based on that. It's based on the theme of that psalm, but it comes predominantly from Psalm 46. That wonderful hymn of Luther, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, 656. A mighty fortress is our God, a trusty shield and weapon. He helps us free from every need that hath us now taken. The old evil foe now means deadly woe. Deep guile and great might are his dread arms in fight. On earth is not his equal. With might of ours cannot be done. Soon were hard loss effected. But for us fights the valiant one, whom God himself elected. Ask ye who, who is this? Jesus Christ it is. Of Sabaoth, Lord, and there's none other God. He holds the field forever. Though devils all the world should fill, all eager to devour us. We tremble not, we fear no ill, they shall not overpower us. This world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will. He can harm us none. He's judged, the deed is done. One little word can fail him. The word they still shall let remain, nor any thanks have for it. He's by our side upon the plain, with his good gifts and spirit. And take they our life, 
Goods, fame, child, and wife, though these all be gone, a victory has been won. The kingdom has remained. That again is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. 656, the great hymn of Luther, Ein Vesteberg. And uh, that uh, is one of my pet peeves, and I have a lot. Uh, it comes with being a pastor. But that is a joyous, powerful hymn, and it's not meant to be sung, you know, a mighty fortress. It's painful. It is, and I remember being taught this, it is, um, it's an up-tempo, you know, so you, you, you sing it with energy and the force, and you should be standing uh, when you sing it. I, of course, uh, just can't do it with, because I have the one camera down here, so uh, um, forgive me for that. But anyway, we sing that, we sing that with vigor. Um, okay, with that, well, you have a blessed work week, blessed night, blessed rest, and uh, by our good Lord's gracious favor, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.